Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video I'll teach you how to use circle packing techniques in Grasshopper. So I've got Rhino 7 open here. I'm going to open up Grasshopper with the Grasshopper icon in the standard toolbar. Alternately you could type the Grasshopper command and press enter and the Grasshopper canvas will open. In params geometry I'll grab an empty curve component and drop that to the canvas. Now it's orange, meaning it doesn't have any data in it. So in the Rhino viewport, I'll run the rectangle command, and I'll make the first corner of the rectangle at zero. I'll type zero and enter. And for the length, I'll type 12 and enter. And for the width, I'll press enter to also use 12. My file is in small objects inches. So this 12 by 12 square denotes the size that I would print or laser cut or plot the result of my work, it also lets me know the domain for any image that we use to control the circle packing, and that'll come into play later in this tutorial. For now, we'll just reference this rectangle. I'll select it, and then in the Grasshopper canvas, right-click that empty curve component and choose Set One Curve. The next step will be to create a mesh from this referenced rectangle. I'll go into the Mesh section of Grasshopper, Triangulation, and grab Try Remesh. If you don't see the inputs of the Try Remesh component or those output names, go to your Display drop-down menu in Grasshopper and choose Draw Full Names, and that'll make it easier to follow along with this tutorial. Now the Try Remesh component can take meshes or NURBS objects or surfaces, but you can also drag in a curve. So if I drag in a curve there, it creates a mesh within that boundary. I want to visualize the edge lengths of this mesh. So in Mesh Analysis, I'll grab the Mesh Edges component, and I'll drag my output result from triangulation into that Mesh Edges component. And now it's more clear what's happening. We're getting this uniform triangle size in the mesh. The length input of the Try Remesh component can be driven by some number slider. So in params input, I'll grab a number slider component, which by default goes between 0 and 1. And I'll drag that into length. And you can move that slider back and forth to see the result. The Mesh Edges component, you don't have to leave the preview on, and if you want it off temporarily, you can just right-click the middle of it and toggle Preview. It's nice to be able to come back to it if you want to visualize how dense the mesh is. What we ultimately need, though, from the Try Remesh component are the vertices, the intersections of all those edges. So in Mesh Analysis, I'll grab Deconstruct Mesh and drag the triangulation result into that mesh input. All these vertices are going to be the location for a circle that bumps up against its neighbors, creating a packing result with these bounding circles. What I don't want are the vertices that lie directly along the edge of my curve. So I'm going to do a little test. In the Maths section of Grasshopper, in Operators, I'll grab this larger than component. And I want to test whether or not points are inside this curve or not. So I'll need one more component here to test. In curve analysis, I'll need point in curve. The points to test will be the vertices of our mesh. The curve to test within will be from our original reference, and the relationship output will be one of three values. Zero if the points are outside, one if they are on the curve or coincident with the curve, and two if they are inside the curve. So I'm going to test those in my larger than component against whether or not they are larger than or equal to the number two, because I only want the ones that are inside. So I'll right-click the second number input, go to the set number flyout, and type in a value of 2, and commit the change. 
Now the output of this will be true and false values, the output of our larger than component. What I want is equal to or larger, because none of these values will be larger than 2. So I really just want the ones that are equal to 2. Now to sort this list of vertices, we go to Sets, Sequence, Cull Pattern. Cull Pattern will use true and false values to remove items from a list. The list we want to cull is all of our vertices, and the cull pattern will be larger than or equal to. And now when I select that component, the preview is just the vertices that are inside the curve. This is all of them. This is just inside. I'll right click the preview for our initial deconstruct mesh component and toggle the preview. We don't need to see those vertices any longer. Doing tests like this with cull pattern will simplify how much the kangaroo solver for the circle packing has to do. And next in the kangaroo 2 section of grasshopper in the main category we'll need a solver. And in goals collision we'll need image circles. The points input for image circle will come from our culled list, and the mesh will come from our try remesh component. Now this mesh doesn't have any color data, so the only value it will use for the size of the circles in this packing simulation will be the minimum value. So until it has some color data, it will be relegated to using just this 0.2 value, which is the default for the minimum radius. It does have an input for a curve to use as a collision object, and I'll drag my initial rectangle curve into that as well. When you have a non-rectangular curve, that becomes more significant, but in this case, it'll keep them from uh, flying outside. And the image circles component will go into the goal objects input of the solver. We're going to need two more components here for the solver, and these are par for the course. Generally use them in any kangaroo definition. We'll need boolean toggle from params input, and that goes into the on input. And you can double click it to make it true or false, basically turning the whole solver off or on. And also from params input, we'll need a button component. And that goes into the reset input so that you can click it to reset. And when I click that, there's a little bit of movement here because given the number of points we have and the minimum radius of point 0.2, they are pushing against each other a little bit. If I decrease my edge length of the mesh, I will subsequently get more points. I'll have to reset the solver, but now you can definitely see a little jiggling as they are pushing around. Now the preview of these points, the original location prior to the solver, we don't need to see that anymore, so I'll toggle the preview off for those. And it would be helpful to visualize some circles. Now you could use any object, it doesn't have to be a circle, but the actual collision is happening with circles. So let's start by visualizing what the circles look like. If we go into the curve section of Grasshopper, primitive, we can grab this circle CNR component. It stands for center, normal, and radius. For the center location, it will be all the vertices locations. And the output, the bottom output of the solver will be those values. And because we only have one, 0.2, that is going to be a uniform radius for all of them. And then you reset the solver. The preview of the points is coming from the solver component, so I will toggle the preview of that off as well. And now let's control that minimum value for our image circles component. I've got a default number slider over here. I'm going to drag it, tap Alt to make a copy, and use that for my minimum value, and drag that down until they're no longer 
colliding too much and then reset the solver. And so that is your simplest use of this image circles component from Kangaroo and Grasshopper. It does a circle packing routine based on the minimum value because this mesh has no color data. So we can complicate it, make it a little bit more interesting if we use a mesh that has some colors. If you go to the mesh section of Grasshopper, under the primitive category, there's a mesh colors component. Drop that to the canvas and I'll put the mesh from the try remesh component into that. The colors are already there in some respect. There are eight different green colors and this will be enough for us to play with the principle here. So you can just replace your input by dragging the mesh colors into the mesh input of image circles. We are going to need a max value for our image circles now. So I'll drag this number slider, tap Alt again, and replace the max value. And let's just make these two different sizes like that. And then we'll reset our solver. Like that. So the preview of the mesh, if I toggle that off, the mesh color preview, and I guess we don't need this preview either. Now that minimum and maximum value for the circles is based on the color data in the mesh. We can come back and replace this curve with something a little bit more interesting at this point. I'll use the polygon command in Rhino number of sides I'll set to 8 and I'll click the star option and I'll place a center point then a radius point and then the depth of the star points. I'll select that star and right click my curve component from the very beginning and choose set one curve to replace that input and then click the button component to reset the solver. So as you move this around and reset the solver, you're calculating just the points within this curve now instead. If you want to use these circles in Rhino to project to a surface or create extrusions or some other object, you can right click the center of it and choose bake and they will bake out as regular Rhino curves. Let's do one more thing here that's really fun. You can use any image for the colors that control the minimum and maximum radius values. So rather than having it be this random sort of speckled color pattern, what we can do is go into params, input, and grab an image sampler component. You can double click the image sampler and locate a file on your computer I'll choose this black and white blurred dot pattern. And this next part is pretty significant. There's an X and Y domain. The initial rectangle we made was a 12 by 12 square. And within that area is where this image will get applied if we change our domain to 0 to 12 and our Y domain to 0 to 12. If we left it at 0 to 1, it would just be one unit and it would pattern over one unit and it wouldn't look like this. So you want to change this domain to the physical space in which you're calculating the packing. And then I'll say OK. And then you take all your vertices and you drag those into the image sampler component. And then you take the output and drag that into colors. And ta-da. And you reset the solver, and you'll see the packing is now based on this. Let me turn the preview of mesh colors back on so you can see it a little bit more clearly. If I move this over to here, I'm getting this top left corner of the image. And then I'll reset the solver like that. And then you just play with your values here. You've got three things in play, a minimum and maximum value for the radius but you also have the initial edge lengths. So if you increase the number uh, here going into length, you actually have fewer vertices, so you will need to increase your max 
amount to fill the same space or increase your minimum amount to get into those tighter corners. And that's how you use circle packing in Kangaroo, inside Grasshopper, inside Rhino 7. Thanks for watching.